Hi guys, it's Nicole. Um, so someone said they wanted to see a day in my life and so we're gonna try this and see what happens even though I don't have much going on in Arizona. Um, but you put this down. It's funny because like here's my uh, my living room which is kind of like loft style and I choose yes those are my dishes I pile them up like this when I'm going through something when my dishes are like piled up in the sink and my room looks a hot mess it's because I'm either stressed out I've gone through a bout of depression or I'm dealing with anxiety panic attacks all those things that just occurs to me a lot of times during the holiday and I'll talk about that um, more but I am late getting to the gym and you're going to meet Clinton and he, um, yeah, me and my trainer, we mouth off at each other all day. So I thought it would be fun to show you guys. But I start every day with, um, I normally do Greek yogurt. This is not Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt is much thicker. Um, this is more of like a, I don't know. And I probably need more, but I'm running late and, you know, I'm trying to respect the trainer. Um... And then I use whey protein. Like when you're, um, so right now I'm weight training for a bodybuilding, well not bodybuilding, but more of a bikini um, competition in March. And when you're training, like you're on all types of supplements, um, you have to make sure you get your protein intake um, throughout the day. And I normally do eggs in the morning, but this is like a quick, like, okay, I woke up late, I need some protein let me get it together type meal um, it could be thicker so good because I need more protein in here oh, I'm gonna be really late today fooling with this camera trying to show y'all my, my deal um, and then I put some honey we might have to put this on the tripod real quick um, I throw some granola in there this probiotic, I don't have time. Um, strawberries, which I hope don't taste like seasoning I had on here before I put the strawberries on here. And yeah, so this is my morning breakfast, which is like a quick, really high protein meal. Um, yogurt, granola, and I throw some strawberries in there. Clinton always has the music extra loud, like you can't even hear. <laughs> Okay. Hi, Clinton. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> this is my crazy trainer. <laughs> this dog is on his period. That's why you got this pamper on. <laughs> Lord. What we doing? <laughs> oh, getting the munches out here. Black. Okay. To a Christmas party last night. This is my friend Jay. He's my homeboy. No one I'm dating or anything. I used to actually date his homeboy, so that's how we know each other. Um, but this is the cutest little Christmas, cheesiest picture we could have took. <laughs> but it was fun. And going to a company Christmas party, like sometimes I miss the nine to five life and and you know company events and stuff. You know entrepreneurship can be a little isolating because you you know you spend a lot of time alone unless you're going into a office atmosphere but you know that was fun we had a good time
I wanted to record this video for a few reasons. Um, to answer a few questions. So here's like a moment of truth situation. It's crazy because this week, and I think some of you guys sense it, I was going through a little bout of depression. Um, and it was, it was like real bad. To the point where I was like Googling every day what to do if you're going through a panic attack. What do you do about anxiety? Um, I started looking up sit, like treatment centers because I really wanted time to just kind of peel back from work and the pressures of being great and just focus on me and, and self-care. You know, I know we throw that that self-care, self-love around a lot, but I really needed to focus on me and I didn't want I didn't want to feel like I don't know. So long story short, I needed to get to the bottom of like, why are you feeling the way you're feeling? And I think sometimes we like go, 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 go. We're trying to reach a goal so much that we don't peel back and say, How do I feel right now? So and that's why I love journals. I have this this journal off of uh, uh, Amazon that's called like Start Where You Are. And it's a cute little like self-discovery journal, but it, it's helped me a lot this week. But I have to get to the root of like, why are you feeling the way you're feeling? And I realized it's a few things. One, the loss of my parents. Um, it makes it hard during holidays to just cope with like not really having family around. And I'll get into my family situation in another video because I don't want to be up in here crying. But um, I've, I've spent a lot of, with the exception of last Christmas, I've probably spent the last seven Christmases alone or on a plane, like flying overseas. I think one time I was flying overseas on Christmas day to Paris. Another time I was flying overseas to Dubai and I know I hate to even bring up like I was flying to Paris because people look at me like girl rich people problems and I'm far from rich, you know, <laughs> um, it's just with like I've been able to travel not because of my monetary situation because I have had times where I had it, um, but I am smart with like accumulating miles oh you know dedicate myself to an airline like delta and then accumulating miles so i accumulated a lot of miles enough to go to dubai or i accumulated enough miles to go to london and only pay taxes um so people see me jet setting and they might think oh she balling no like these loyalty programs <laughs> that help the sister out a lot it's either the loyalty programs or a lot of times if you see me traveling like to vietnam i was on a press trip like it's, it's so crazy because everything was paid for. So I left the house and accidentally I was in a rush. So I left my license at home and I left my credit cards. And I was still able to go on that trip and enjoy myself and uh, without my license and my credit cards. You know, I have my passport. Um, but yeah, so getting back to source of depression, you know, I lost my parents when I was, I was it's, it's been over 10 to, 10 to 15 years ago. I don't even really want to calculate and look back. Both of them were, um, my father was 42, my mom would have turned 42 within a few months. So in knowing that, I know that life is so short. And I think I've rushed through life knowing that life is so short. So anything I wanted, like there's no way I'm going to work a nine to five that I'm miserable at. I will work a nine to five, but I have to love it. And there's no way I can work a 95 and let five years go by um, and be miserable knowing that my parents died so young and life isn't guaranteed. And so that's why it's very hard for me to open up to people because like if you haven't lost a parent, I feel like it, it'll be hard for you to understand me. Um, and then if you're not an entrepreneur, it's going to be hard for you to understand my struggle as an entrepreneur. So there's two looming things that I've been going through. Damn it, I do not want to cry. I don't, and someone asked me um, this week, they were like, why do you have such little, little views on your YouTube channel? 
I don't promote this YouTube channel that often because I love it's such a small community of people that I feel are rooting for me and my success and my next chapter. I don't want the whole world watching as I figure myself out. You know, like they can watch later on. Like if they stumble across my videos later on, good. Watch it, you know, comment, etc. But right now, I just want to open up to a small group of people because even when my Nicole Vichy blog was a baby and I had a little baby audience, it was so much freedom in that. It was like so liberating. And then as it grew and it got such a huge audience, you almost feel like you become a slave to what people want and you no longer have the freedom to express yourself, to express your opinions. Like, girl, why did you say that? You know, like you're not supposed to be biased. Well, it's my sight and it's my opinion. And of course, my opinion is probably going to be biased <laughs> because it's my personal like things I like and I want. And so over time, as you grow and your following grows, and then you start working with brands and those type of things, your freedom becomes more limited. And an example of that is even the blog that I just put up, um, I was told, you know, hey, can you let us, like, can you let me run it by the client before you put it out? And I'm just like, but this isn't a part of the package you know, that we sold, cause we had an advertising campaign going on at the time and I decided to do a behind the scenes video just for the blog and they're like, oh, I like to run it past the client. I'm like, but this isn't in the package. This is just something I want to do for the people that follow me. And so that was filmed in the beginning of October and then it was this, well, let me, let, the, let me show them anyway. And then, so, you know, there's this long process of waiting for an okay or approval that I never got. And I'm running it past three or four or five people and, and getting their opinions. And all of a sudden, I'm almost talked out of putting out that vlog. And so I'm glad I uploaded it the other day with nobody's permission. I haven't promoted it. And you guys that watched it, commented, and said that you loved it. Thank you so much because I feel like there's people around me that don't want me to put out these videos that show just a raw me, unperfected. You know, the last video, the lighting wasn't right. I looked like a Oompa Loompa, whatever it's called, <laughs> orange. You know, just the ceiling fan light shining down on me. I, I don't even think I was focused in the uh, camera right. But I don't. Th I feel like sometimes you become a slave to your success. And people expect a certain quality out of you. And all of a sudden, you're working so hard to give them that quality that you don't put out anything. And you're just stuck and stifled. And I don't want to be stuck... And I don't want to be stifled because that's not me. So going back to the depression I was going through this week, um, when I when I you know pinpointed it, it was again because the holidays are coming up, my family situation, not having family, and and feeling kind of alone and feeling isolated. You know, entrepreneurship is a little isolating. Um, so yeah, that's what's been going on with me this week, and. This guy, I once I dated him before, <laughs> but we used to like, I guess we used to go on like little play dates when I lived in Atlanta um, to like wing night at Buffalo Wild Wings and he reached out to me after my last video and I think people do, do this since I was struggling a little bit and he just was like, I wish, I never knew you were struggling with so much when we met back, you know, eight years ago. I didn't know about your life back then. You were kind of guarded. I wish I could have been there for you more and have been a better friend. And even now, I kind of just, I've been wondering like, okay, how can people be a better friend to you? Especially when you're going through things. And I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's just needing someone to just listen when I'm going through something. You know, the other day I, I talked to a friend and she's been working for the government for, you know, over 10 years. I'm so proud of her because I feel like that's very rare nowadays. But one thing she said to me was, um, 
She said, and only because, like, again, when you work with brands and when you work with advertisers, you can get a huge advertising campaign. Like, huge. You know, six figures, whatever. But when I say it takes sometimes three to six months <laughs> to get your check, it takes a long time for these advertisers and these brands to cut a check. And so you're investing every dollar into making these campaigns happen. You know, all these videos and high produced things you see me um, doing, events that you see me doing, a lot of it I've invested my own money into. And I am exhausted and I am drained. Like, I'm not even, I'm not even, like, this is as real as it can get. I am financially and mentally drained by it all. But, again, I talked to my friend and I'm just, you know, just telling her everything that's going on with me this week. And the one thing she said to me was, well, what's your plan B? And I was taken aback for a second. And then I was like, I don't have a plan B. And I didn't know whether it was smart enough or not. Like, is it not smart to not have a plan B? But I want my plan, plan A to work. And that's why it's the only plan. And um, and and so it just it reminded me of the ways of thinking. Like there's this traditional way of thinking where you you graduate from school, you get a job, and you stay there. You know, you stay there, and you get and you get your family, and you get your husband, and and that's just your life and and then you live happily ever after and then you and then there's that other way of thinking where you're somewhere and you're like mm, I'm not sure about this and you and you go for your passion and you go for your dream and you sacrifice and you know it's going to be rough and you know it's going to be painful because growth is painful like comfort you be comfortable you know comfortable <laughs> But I'm uncomfortable with being comfort, comfortable because I want to grow. And growing is painful in these little spots where you don't know how long it's going to take to get the next check or, or when you're going to be able to produce a new video or when you're going to be able to show people how amazingly awesome you are because of your limited resources. They're very uncomfortable. But what I do know is that I see a light at the end of the tunnel. I have a brain that I love. I couldn't say that before. And I'm going to keep pushing. So I say that to say it's just very hard to find people who understand and who get me as an entrepreneur, as someone who has lost her parents and numerous family members. And there was a sense of isolation and a sense of loneliness this week. But I'm feeling... But now I've taken control of my situation and said, like, girl, you're going to have to do everything yourself. And I'm fine with that. I feel so much better and I feel so much more empowered. And I feel like I've taken my power back. And um, I'm just excited for what's to come. So thank you guys for watching these videos. Thank you for not being judgmental. Thank you for not ever saying, why don't you go back? Because... You don't go back to anything that changes you for the worst, that negatively affects your spirit, that breaks your spirit. You do not run back to what broke you. And I will say just running a gossip site and the commentary that was on it from commenters and, and just having to report on negativity all the time, it really broke my spirit as, you know, it really broke my spirit and it weighed on me so much. Um, but I will also say my gossip blog saved my life because it gave it, it kept my mind occupied. So I never got a time to grieve for my parents and for the losses that I encountered. And um, it just like life moved so fast for those seven to eight years that I never got a chance to just sit back and just think of my losses. Now I get more time to think and sit back. And so it looms and it weighs on me. Um, but I will get through this. And so again, thank you so much. I will do so many more videos. 
And um, yeah, we'll just grow together. Thank you. <laughs>